Now, a state of alert has been declared in Portugal as soaring temperatures cause much of Europe to swelter. Temperatures in Portugal and Spain have reached the mid-40s. Even in Britain, the government has issued an extreme weather notice. Heat waves are becoming more frequent and more extreme because of climate change, as the Dave Shiri reports. This is what's left of the land after fires ripped through Portugal's forests. Dozens have been injured and thousands of firefighters have been battling the flames. And it isn't over. We're going to live in the next days in situations of maximum risk and so any negligence will cause a fire of great proportions and then there will never be means, neither in Portugal nor the world, to extinguish fires that gain the dimension of that calamity. Facing more blistering heat, with temperatures expected to surpass 40 degrees Celsius on Tuesday, Portugal has raised its alert level. But these record-breaking temperatures are also happening in other parts of Western Europe. Winds have been absorbing heat over Africa and carrying it north. Spain's residents have been told to drink plenty of water as the country goes through its second heat wave of the season with temperatures predicted to reach the high 40s in some areas. In the UK, the Met Office has issued an extreme weather warning. It's a rare alert used to warn people of potential health and transport issues caused by the heat. And in countries like Italy, the heat wave has led to drought, drying up rivers and hurting crops. Experts argue understanding climate change's role in all this is critical. We've heard the warnings from the Met Office about the risks to health and to infrastructure from that. Uh, that really sort of sets the scene for quite how important it is that our policymakers understand the scientific evidence around climate change and how um, that is going to be absolutely instrumental in setting many of the policies over the coming decades. Heat waves and wildfires are not unfamiliar to these parts of Europe, but they're becoming more severe, happening sooner than usual and more frequently. And scientists say unless governments around the world make steep cuts to emissions, temperatures will continue to rise. Okay, so we talked about this last week, and now we're gonna do a, a deep dive with Davo. Dubai, Dubai mm -hmm. is making it rain in a sweltering desert by zapping clouds with electricity using drones. Fascinating, isn't it? So much to ask, but let's just let's take it and then we'll we'll okay. do a few questions. Before we talk about what's happening in Dubai, let's talk about cloud seeding in general, because a lot of people I don't think understand what cloud seeding is. And this has been going on for decades, by the way. This is not something that's brand new. Um, but traditionally, what cloud seeding is, it involves using aircraft or drones or even some cannons to push silver iodide up high into the clouds. Why silver iodide? Because what that, that has the same crystallized structure as ice. So once it gets up into the clouds, it starts to accumulate ice on it and these large raindrops, which helps especially in a you know a cloud mass that's not really going to rain it helps to bring rain and especially snow down so it works it does work marginally but the problem with silver iodide through the years has been this is that they they feel it could be harmful to aquatic life okay okay so over in dubai which is what you're seeing here they took it a different step and what they basically did they had a fleet of drones that flew up into cloud cover and they, they used electrical charges to force water droplets to combine into larger ones. So not silver, not cloud seeding no, as we know. No, no, right. they're not using the traditional silver iodide, which takes out the environmental right. aspect of that, okay? So they're using just electricity to create larger raindrops. Why larger raindrops? Because in Dubai, they only average about four inches of rain per year as most of the rain that falls out of the clouds evaporates. Because it's so hot, it's so dry, and the water molecules are so tiny. So what they're trying to stimulate by using electricity these droplets to be larger. Hence, they can make it to the ground. Now, I will tell you that the jury is still kind of out a bit on whether or not this was a fluke, whether this is something that can work long term.
So they need to continue with these drones and they're going to continue to do this. Yes, Mr. Rhodes? So, assuming it works and it mm -hmm. wasn't a fluke, mm -hmm. why not use this out in the western U.S. where all these wildfires are and the drought is going on? Could this not help us That's here? That's a fantastic question. And they've been trying. Uh, and it, this is stuff that, first of all, it's very expensive, too. Uh, you're talking about millions and millions of dollars, which is fine when you're trying to alleviate a drought. Sure. It cannot work with wildfires. Here's the thing. You can't just throw silver iodide or electricity into a clear sky and it rains. It doesn't work that way. You have to have the right cloud structure, the right cloud height. They have to be tall, getting up well into the freezing layers. Then you can try to stimulate that process. And they've done that out west. During the winter time, when they get days and days of cloud cover, mm -hmm. they've done that and they've noticed they've been able to increase the snowfall pack five to 15%. Okay. But the area and the weather, Russell, around wildfires is not conducive to that type of cloud cover, so you can't do it. In other words, we need to treat the drought which will then alleviate the wildfires. Got Does it. that make sense? Yes. And that's the way it has to go. Five to 15% increase in precipitation out west due to this, it's a start. Okay. And it's a good start, especially over in Dubai for those folks who are just trying to generate more rainfall. Now, on the opposite side about, oh, we can't, we, we're done. We can't, we don't have time. <laughs> another time, we'll pick it up another time. You guys are creating clouds out of nowhere. You actually target storm systems. If there's no clouds in the sky that have any moisture in them, then uh, we can't do anything. What we can do is tap into what's there and assist Mother Nature. Kind of like a steroid kick for the clouds or something. Exactly. Yes, Mr. Rhodes? So, assuming it works and it mm -hmm. wasn't a fluke, mm -hmm. Why not use this out in the western U.S. where all these wildfires are and the drought is going on? Could this not help us That's here? That's a fantastic question. And they've been trying. Uh, and it, this is stuff that, first of all, it's very expensive, too. Uh, you're talking about millions and millions of dollars, which is fine when you're trying to alleviate a drought. Sure. It cannot work with wildfires. Here's the thing. You can't just throw silver iodide or electricity into a clear sky and it rains. It doesn't work that way. You have to have the right cloud structure the right cloud height, they have to be tall, getting up well into the freezing layers, then you can try to stimulate that process. And they've done that out west. During the winter time, when they get days and days of cloud cover, mm -hmm. they've done that and they've noticed they've been able to increase the snowfall pack five to 15 okay. percent. But the area and the weather, Russell, around wildfires is not conducive to that type of cloud cover, so you can't do it. In other words, we need to treat the drought which will then alleviate the wildfires. Got Does that make sense? Yes. And that's the way it has to go. Five to 15% increase in precipitation out west due to this, it's a start. Okay. And it's a good start, especially over in Dubai for those folks who are just trying to generate more rainfall. Now, on the opposite side about, oh, we can't, we, we're done, we can't, we don't have time. <laughs> another time, we'll pick it up another time. You guys are creating clouds out of nowhere. You actually target storm systems. If there's no clouds in the sky that have any moisture in them, then uh, we can't do anything. What we can do is tap into what's there and assist Mother Nature. Kind of like a steroid kick for the clouds or something. Exactly. Yeah. Okay, so we talked about this last week, and now we're going to do a, a deep dive with Davo. Dubai. Dubai mm -hmm. is making it rain in a sweltering desert by zapping clouds with electricity using drones. Fascinating, isn't it? So much to ask, but let's just, let's take it and then we'll, we'll okay. do a few questions. Before we talk about what's happening in Dubai, let's talk about cloud seeding in general, because a lot of people, I don't think, understand what cloud seeding is. And this has been going on for decades, by the way. This is not something that's brand new. Um, but traditionally, what cloud seeding is, it involves using aircraft or drones or even some cannons to push silver iodide up high into the clouds. Why silver iodide? Because what that, that has the same crystal structure as ice so once it gets up into the clouds it starts to accumulate ice on it and these large raindrops which helps 
especially in a you know a cloud mass that's not really going to rain it helps to bring rain and especially snow down so it works it does work marginally but the problem with silver iodide through the years has been this is that they they feel it could be harmful to aquatic life okay okay so over in dubai which is what you're seeing here they took it a different step and what they basically did they had a fleet of drones that flew up into cloud cover and they, they used electrical charges to force water droplets to combine into larger ones. So not silver, not cloud no, seeding as we no, know. No, no, right. they're not using the traditional silver iodide, which takes out the environmental right. aspect of that, okay? So they're using just electricity to create larger raindrops. Why larger raindrops? Because in Dubai, they only average about four inches of rain per year as most of the rain that falls out of the clouds evaporates. Why not use this out in the western U.S. where all these wildfires are and the drought is going on? Could this not help us? And here's something we haven't seen or heard in quite some time. Rain falling in the valley this morning. I love that sound. Mm -hmm. This video was from downtown Sacramento overnight. After 66 days without measurable rain, we have finally broken that dry streak. The rain arrived just in time for the morning commute. This is what it looked like in Roseville along Douglas Boulevard this morning. Drivers, of course, had to turn on the windshield wipers for the first time in a long time. That was real rainfall, not just the nuisance rain that just dirties everything. Yeah. That was uh, good stuff. So at the same time, a small plane was flying across the gray skies equipped with some tools for a special assignment. KCRA 3 meteorologist Heather Waldman shows us what that plane was doing. Yeah, it was working on a story at Sacramento Executive Airport yesterday when this aircraft passed by on its way to the hangar. My photographer and I noticed these odd attachments on the wings. You can see them right there. So we asked the pilot about them. It turns out that plane is a cloud seeding aircraft and it was flying through this morning's rain. The cloud seeding today was done by SMUD as a way to help increase stream flows to allow for more hydroelectric power generation. Here's the basic science. Clouds form when billions of tiny water vapor particles condense onto dust and other microscopic particles to form water droplets. Those dust particles are called cloud condensation nuclei. Big phrase there. So you can think of them as cloud seeds. Every cloud has them, but not every cloud has enough to produce rain. That's where cloud seeding comes in. It's a weather modification technique that adds more of these tiny particles to the lower part of the atmosphere. That's done with aircraft like what you just saw or ground-based generators. The goal is to make the clouds more effective rain and snow producers. Silver iodide is the most commonly used cloud seed. And while silver is a very toxic heavy metal in large quantities, environmental research shows that cloud seeding is not likely to be harmful to wildlife, although it may reduce the growth of algae and other bacteria in freshwater systems. Still, cloud seeding operations are carefully monitored to ensure that it's safe for the environment and for us. But now the question, does it work? Cloud seeding has been used off and on by many countries since the 1940s, but only recently did research confirm that, yeah, cloud seeding can cause a cloud to produce rain or snow when it otherwise would not have. According to Caitlin Bedner, who manages SMUD's cloud seeding program, cloud seeding projects have resulted in precipitation increases between an average of 3 and 10%. But there are still big questions about just how economical this practice is. I'm meteorologist Heather Waldman for KCRA 3 News. This is the shuttle's fuel tank. It may only be 130 miles to space, but to cover that distance, the engines will use half a million gallons of fuel. And that works out at two feet to the gallon. Despite the cost, however, NASA does need to test these engines once in a while. So they built this place in the wetlands of Mississippi. The first thing they installed was a huge loudspeaker, through which they played white noise to simulate the sound of a rocket. They then sent a number of trucks in different directions out into the wilderness and the drivers were ordered to stop when the noise levels became acceptable. 
This gave them an imaginary boundary line, and anyone living on the inside of it was offered a simple choice. Stay, and you'll never hear another television program as long as you live. Or take the NASA shilling and get out. No one stayed, and NASA ended up with exactly what it wanted. 125,000 acres of nothing. They even had to move five cemeteries because the noise they were planning on making would wake the dead. Uh, don't worry if you can't hear what I'm saying. Um, I couldn't even hear myself. This is the loudest sound you could possibly conceive. And, as it turns out, the cleanest. Now, the most amazing thing is that that cloud up there, which was generated by the engine, is just a mixture of hydrogen and oxygen. It's water vapour. And in about an hour's time, someone in Mississippi is going to get wet washing. It will actually rain. I told you, it's raining. <laughs> That's unbelievable. Oh. NASA's playing God. It's making its own weather. Number two. So this machine here, appropriately named Big Wind, is designed to put out oil well fires. It works quite literally by shooting a cloud of water vapor directly into an oil well fire. The combination of water vapor and wind blows the fire right out. Oil well fires are incredibly difficult to control, but this machine is an innovative solution to an impossible problem. Why not use this out in the western U.S. where all these wildfires are and the drought is going on? Could this not help us? We've heard the warnings from the Met Office about the risk to health and to infrastructure from that. Uh, that really sort of sets the scene for quite how important it is that our policymakers understand the scientific evidence around climate change and how um, that is going to be absolutely instrumental in setting many of the policies over the coming decades. <laughs>